G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing some testing in relation to our tyres. So as you can see there, the cruise is looking a bit weird today. It's got the stock standard Sahara rims on it. But what we're going to be doing is testing out some of the differences and some of the compromises we make when we fit bigger tyres to our vehicles. So let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so I already do have a video specifically as to why I chose that particular wheel and tire for our cruiser. So you can check out the link above and uh, see that video there. Today's video is gonna be testing some of the sacrifices that I've made when changing to such a large tire that we have here. So just covering some of the basics before we start, this rim and tire here is what you get when you buy one of these cars new. So this here is an 18 inch rim which do come on the Sahara models of these Land Cruisers and wrapped around it is a 285 60 18 tire. Now this particular one is a Dunlop Grand Trek AT25 so it's an all terrain tire and to be honest it's not actually that bad for uh, considering some of the tires you get on the markets these days when you buy a brand new car, this one here is not too bad at all. So I've upgraded the tire size and the tire type here to a BF Goodridge all-terrain. This one here is a 305 6518. So significantly bigger as you can see there and quite a bit wider as well. And there's a couple of reasons we did that. So some of the pros for fitting a big tire like this very quickly. The main one is clearance and traction. So they're your two biggest reasons to get bigger tires. A bigger footprint, both a wider tire and a larger tire in diameter is gonna give you more contact to the ground and therefore give you more traction. Secondly, this is the only way to increase the diff clearance on your vehicle. You can increase the suspension of the vehicle, but all you're gonna be doing is lifting the body up and the axle and the, uh, the, uh, the diff are gonna remain at the same height. By fitting bigger tires here, you're gonna increase the distance between the hub of the axle there and the ground, therefore lifting the axle off the ground a little bit and improving the overall clearance of your vehicle. Another good reason to change them as well is just a better construction. This tire here is an incredibly strong tire and it's gonna be one of the best tires off-road to ensure you don't get punctures or have any damage to that tire while you're doing some of those harder tracks. Fourth reason, not so important, but still a good one, is they look better. These particular tire here, in my opinion, looks a lot better and definitely adds that uh, sort of feel to the car overall. There are many reasons as to why we upgrade our tire size and the type of tire that we're running, but there are also many factors and negatives that come along with that as well that might uh, influence your decision if you are thinking about upgrading that tire size. So the first one is increased wear and tear and fuel consumption. With bigger rubber like this, your engine is going to be working harder, trying to spin that rubber, and then once you get up to speed, keeping it at that speed. So not only will you increase the wear and tear on the engine and all the parts in relation to driveline, uh, CV joints, transmissions, transfer case, and everything along with that, you're also gonna be using more fuel. The engine will just sit, uh, simply be working harder to keep these wheels turning at the same speed as these wheels would be. Now also, these tyres are not cheap. There is a significant outlay in the price when you are looking at upgrading your tyre size. Now keep in mind, if you're changing the size from your stock standard tyres, all the tyres you've currently got on your four-wheel drive, you will need to buy five. If you only buy four, and keep your spare the same size as your stock one and you do have a blowout, you're gonna be putting increased wear and tear on the diff if you do have to replace them, as the wheels on that axle will be spinning at different speeds. Now in relation to cost, keep in mind, if you are trying to save some money, the amount you spend on these tires is a significant amount of petrol and diesel, whatever it is, that can take you out to places to explore. You don't necessarily need tires like this. They do help in some circumstances, but it's gonna vary from situation to situation. Don't get tied up in the hype that you need to have big wheels and tires to go exploring. That's just simply not the case. And the money you can save on buying big tires like this might be the money that gets you out to go and see those places and the reason you bought the four wheel drive in the first place. Now a couple of other considerations that might be classed as a negative are a few things such as fitment. So when you're fitting bigger tires and wheels like we have here, you're gonna have to uh, think about the things you need to do to fit it. Now on this car, I had to do a, a few things to make them fit. First of all, you have to put a two inch lift kit in. I needed that clearance between the guards when the vehicle's on full flex to make sure these can spin freely and not gonna cause any damage to the guards back and front on this vehicle. 
Further, I also had to fit upper control arms in the front as well, just to bring the caster angle back to center and help the vehicle uh, keep its factory steering feel as well. And thirdly, I had to fit an adjustable rear pan hard rod, and that was just to make sure the axle is centered when a two inch lift kit comes up. These tires here are a positive 25 mil offset, so they do widen the stance of the vehicle. And when that two inch lift kit was put in, you could clearly see the axle had moved across to the driver's side. Putting that adjustable rear pan hard rod in the, in the uh, rear there did bring the axle back in center, and now it's nice and even down both sides. You're also gonna to have to keep in mind the location of your spare wheel. This is gonna depend on what vehicle you have. In my case here on the Land Cruiser 200, the spare fits up underneath the rear of the car. Now this tire here only just fits. Anything bigger than this one here would not fit and means that you would have to buy a rear bar or some sort of swing away to fit that spare tire on or chuck it on the roof, which is not ideal having that weight up high. This also goes for cars with uh, spares on the rear doors, things like patrols. They do have a cutaway on the rear bumper and anything too big, uh, too big an increase in that tire size is not gonna fit and you're gonna run into the same drama there. The last negative and thing you've got to consider as well is availability of tires. And that's where this particular size of tire comes in uh, quite a negative here. So this is a 305 65 18 and it's a very difficult tire to source and most tire stockists don't keep these on hand. Things like a 33 and a 35 it might be a lot easier to find, but this one here, metric terms, is about a 33.6 inch tire, and it's a not a very common tire made by a lot of brands, and therefore it's a uh, big negative, and something that I'm gonna take into consideration next time I purchase a new set of tires. Okay guys, so being a tire comparison video, we're gonna be doing some tests today today to see the effects of these tires in the real world. So there's a couple of tests we're gonna be doing, uh, and both in relation to performance and fuel consumption. So these are your two biggest uh, sacrifices when we're fitting these larger tires that we have here today. So in order to do that, first of all, we're gonna do a performance test. So we're gonna see the difference between the acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers an hour with these tires, smaller tires on, and then gonna fit the larger ones to do the same again. And also an acceleration test between 60 kilometers and 100 kilometers as well. Just seeing what sort of difference these tires have on performance. We're then going to be doing a short 50 kilometer loop just up and down the highway only. And we're going to see the different the effect that it has on the, the fuel consumption. Now during that loop, we're also going to be set up doing, setting up the ultra gauge with a whole lot of data lists that are going to compare the effects that these larger tires have on the engine. So that will include things like engine load, RPM, the effects it has on a lockup kit and the transmission temperatures and all that sort of stuff. So we'll chuck that up and we'll explain that as we go along. So guys, look, with the setup I have on this car, I don't have any way to officially measure the 0 to 160 to 100 km acceleration tests through the OBD2 port. I don't have any fancy GPS gear that's going to do that for me. So I'm going to do it using an app on the phone. Now, I know it's not the most reliable way, but it's the only way I have to do it today. Doing it, I will try and keep the tests as consistent as possible. Uh, with the particular app I'm using, I have to keep the phone flat, and where I'm going to put it in the vehicle to ensure it doesn't move around the vehicle, I can't get a camera on. So... I'll try and get a camera up on the speedo, but I'm gonna to have to put the phone down separately and then bring up the results after the fact and we'll see uh, what sort of change and uh, difference we're looking at between the two times. Okay guys, so I just thought I'd mention a couple of other uh, consistencies that we'll be keeping along with all these tests today as well. So first of all, we have a full tank of fuel. So at the moment, I'm probably running about 3.4 ton in weight. The car's fairly empty, but we have two full-size spares in the rear, plus just some normal gear and tools that we normally carry around, but otherwise fairly empty. Now, look, I'm not going to be refilling the tanks through the test today. I'll go over a bit more how we're going to measure the fuel in the fuel testing. But throughout the testing today, I wouldn't expect we're going to be using more than 15 to 20 litres, being about 20 kilos at max, so it shouldn't affect the results between the two tyres that much. Further, I have checked all the tyre pressures of all eight tyres that we're going to be using today. They're all at 40 psi, uh, corroborated by a digital gauge, the same gauge for all of them, and that was all pumped up at the same time, at the same um, temperature as well, so they should all be relatively the same. So I won't be able to actually capture the app recording the results, but then we'll, uh, at the end, we'll analyse the results, plus go over the ultra gauge readings as well, and we'll go through that on both sets. Now I'm going to do three runs on each and do the, uh, the average out of all three. So all the tests that were done were done on the same section of road at the same time of day. Now I should make mention as well, this Land Cruiser that we're testing in today has not been modified in terms of its performance. So there's no aftermarket exhausts, no engine tunes, remaps or lockup kits. It's a standard VDJ 200 4.5 litre V8 twin turbo diesel that you would buy from factory.
Now on the 0 to 100 km hour tests, the ultra gauge isn't really going to show us a whole lot of important information. You can see there on the engine load that the engine is working as hard as it can and the boost is obviously coming up to full pressure. So the three runs were done on the small tyres from the acceleration test. Now the first test we got 12 seconds from 0 to 100 and 7.4 seconds for 60 to 100. The second test was 12.9 seconds and 8.8 .8 seconds respectively and the third test was 12.5 seconds and 7 seconds. So from that the average from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour was 12.47 seconds and the average there for the 60 to 100 kilometer hour tests was 7.73 seconds. So the next test we're going to be doing is in relation to fuel consumption. So here I've reset the trip meter on the vehicle and on these tests I will be driving in sequential mode in top gear which is 6th gear on the cruiser. Now a quick tip, if you push across the sequential up into 6 like you ordinarily would and then press up 2 more times, it actually slightly alters the electronic tuning in the gearbox and will hold top gear, the 6th gear, a little bit easier and lower the threshold for activation. So with the ultra gauge set up here, we can see a whole lot of statistics in relation to the testing. So we can see here the engine load roughly sits around the mid 60% mark throughout the test. Obviously it varies up and down throughout it, but generally it's sitting around that mid 60%. Now kilometers an hour, we are sitting at the 110 kilometer mark on the GPS that is about 107 to 108 kilometers actual. Now the lockup kit will stay engaged the entire time, apart from the fact that where I do a U-turn halfway through the test to head back to the start. The RPM stays at the 1700 mark and rarely changes as it stays in top gear throughout the test. And the boost PSI is around the 5 to 8 mark depending on the road conditions. You'll see there the transmission temps stick at the 59 to 60 mark. Okay, so the first test is done there and we can see there a total of 50.4 kilometers with the average being 13.7 liters per 100 kilometers. Now the reason I'm using the vehicle's fuel trip meter is because it has proven in prior experience to be extremely accurate when compared with the actual fuel usage uh, calculated from uh, fuel pumps. So generally this fuel trip meter is about 0.1 of a litre per 100 kilometres with it of accuracy and therefore I'm going to be using it for the tests today. So with the first round of testing done it's now time to change the tyres and put on the larger BF Goodridge again. So a quick tip when changing your tyres, make sure you tighten up your wheel nuts to the torque setting that's recommended for your particular vehicle in your owner's manual. And uh, it's also a good idea to make sure that you go back and check these torque settings after the first 100 or so kilometres of driving to make sure they've retained that spec. If one of those wheel nuts starts to come loose, it's only a matter of time before the rest start to loosen off and there is the potential there for that wheel falling off while you're driving. Okay guys, so that was no F1 pit stop, but I'm pretty happy, about three minutes or just under per tire. So I'm pretty happy with that, about 20 minutes to get all the tires changed back on the ground again and the old ones packed away. So we're back out to the testing area again, which is about five kilometers from my house where I changed the tires. One thing I forgot to mention before, one of the other considerations is noise. So after having those standards back on again, which I haven't had on for a long time, there is a noise difference. Look, it's not massive, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, these 200s are pretty well insulated as they are, and you can definitely hear those all terrains uh, moving along the road at highway speeds. So we're gonna uh, do the same tests again in terms of acceleration, uh, those zero to 100 and 60 to 100, and then we'll compare the results again. So uh, let's get going. So here we go on the test for the big runs for the acceleration. Now again with the ultra gauge, it's not going to show a whole lot of uh, pertinent information in regards to this particular test, but you will notice the engine load is still at 100%, working as hard as it can to get the vehicle up to speed. So in the first test, 0 to 100 kilometers was 13.2 seconds, 60 to 100 kilometers was 7.6 seconds. Second test, 15.1 seconds and 9.4 seconds respectively. And the third test, 15.6 seconds and 8.3 seconds. So in review on these big tires, Average of 0 to 100 kilometers an hour was 14.6 seconds and the average for 60 to 100 kilometers an hour was 8.4 seconds. Now if we compare that back to the first test, the average for the 0 to 100 was 12.4 seconds and 60 to 100 was 7.7 .7 seconds. Now although those tests don't seem like they're a huge difference, the percentage increase in the 0 to 100 kilometers an hour was a 17.7% increase, which is definitely significant. And the percentage increase for the 60 to 100 km hour speed tests were 9.1%. So those tests really do show that there are a significant increase in those times when you are adding larger tyres. 
So now it comes to doing our highway test for the bigger tires. So we set the ultra gauge up again the same way that we did for the small test. And we can see here the engine load sits around the 70% mark. So uh, overall it's just a few percent higher than it was on the smaller tires. You can see that the intake temperatures were still sitting around 20 degrees. Now look, the kilometers per hour we sat at about 99 on average for the second run. Now the reason is because the larger tires do alter the effect it has on the speedo and sitting at 99 kilometers an hour is equivalent to about 107 actual, which is the same speed we ran on the first test. So one thing you'll notice on this test is the lockup kit does unlock quite frequently, indicated by a zero under lockup on the bottom left of the ultra gauge. This then causes the vehicle to change gear to increase the speed, and obviously the torque converter temperatures do spike up a little bit. But overall the torque, the temperatures in the transmission did remain at the 60 mark, and the boost pressure was indifferent to the first test. So there you go guys, the second test is done. That was exactly the same section of highway I just did. And as you can see from the ultra, uh, the ultra gauge, the temperatures were almost the same. So environmental factors were very, uh, very similar, if not identical. And we've got 14.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So to be honest, that surprised me a little bit. It's only a little bit over the 13.8 we got on the first test. I was expecting a little bit more. However, it didn't. So during that test, we did get stuck behind a couple of road trains for two kilometers, but I don't think that affected the test too much. Now I did turn around at almost the an exact spot that I did on the first time. And one thing you'll note from the results is that the odometer is only showing 47.8 kilometers, whereas the first time it showed 50.4. So although we did the exact same route, just those larger tires obviously affect the speedo and the way in which the uh, speed sensors calculate the distance traveled. So another thing you've got to keep in mind. So here's an illustration of the difference between those two tires. So we see in the top left hand corner, we have the factory tire size compared with size two, which is our new side tire size. Now on the left hand side, we've got all the diameters and measurements and whatnot in millimeters and the percentage change. And you can see there at the bottom, the revolutions per kilometer has decreased by 25 revolutions. The vehicle speedo is calculated using the wheel speed sensors at each wheel. Now this is obviously going to change if the wheels aren't spinning as much, however your horizontal speed is still going to remain the same. So in this test I used a GPS which uses horizontal speed and uh, this is more accurate in this particular circumstance for making sure we have that consistent speed. Now you see on the bottom of this image as well, you've got the speedometer error. So you can see here at 110 kilometers an hour, you're actually doing 117.3 in those bigger tires. So that's a difference of 7.3 kilometers, which is significant. Now keep in mind, speedos from factory are not 100% accurate to start with, hence why in the first test I was doing 110 kilometers an hour, which represented 107 actual, and in the second test I was doing 99 kilometers an hour, which also represented about 107 actual. So this is another factor you have to keep in mind to make sure you take into account if you are upgrading the tire size. So there you go guys, that's a whole lot of things you've got to take in consideration when you're looking at upgrading the tyres, both in the uh, type of tyres and the size of tyres that you might want to run on your four-wheel drives. And uh, all the testing today was obviously done on my 2014 Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. So just another thing for those who tow caravans or tow heavy loads, the results that we experienced today are going to be exponentially increased if you do tow heavy things such as a caravan. So having the wind resistance and the drag and the weight of something heavy like a van behind your car is going to put an additional stress onto your vehicle. Now in upgrading the size of the, uh, the wheels and tires that we run are just going to increase the workload that that engine has to do even more so again over stock tires. So you've got to carefully d consider and decide whether or not a big tire and an all-terrain tire is something that you actually need for your style and type of driving or whether it's something that you can do without you can just run with a good quality standard size tire anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the test today i hope you uh, learned a little bit i sure did about the fuel usage anyway i was expecting a lot more but if you do have any questions or want me to clarify anything that i said uh, mentioned in today's video make sure to hit us up on exploring oz on either facebook or instagram and i'll be sure to get back to you otherwise guys stick around and we'll see you in the next video cheers